And here we go, we're at chapter 6, verse 16. And he who was Elisha answered, Fear not, for they who be with us are more than they who be with them. Notes. Over 300 times in the Word of God, the Holy Spirit tells us to basically fear not. We should ever remember this, for the promise applicable then is most assuredly applied to the same situations now. <clears throat> Continuing, And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes, that he may see. Notes, we're talking about the eyes of the servant, of course. Scripture and the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Notes. The Holy Spirit allowed this to happen, that you and I may understand by faith that we are surrounded by such, even though not seen by the natural human eyes. Now, what an encouragement that should sound. In, the, in this particular passage, we are given a glimpse into the spirit world of righteousness. God's got us covered, friends. Continuing. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray you, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. Notes. The same, the same gospel that softens the heart also hardens the heart. This could be said the same about the mind as well. And as well, that which opens blinded eyes can also uh, close them as well. The gospel always has a powerful effect on anyone, whether it is positive or negative. And the effect is according to the response of the individual. Verse 19. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. Notes. Now this was not a lie. Their intention was to stop Elisha, because he was hindering them from getting to the king of Israel. The king of Israel was the one whom they were really actually seeking. Verse 20. And it came to pass, when they were come into Samaria, that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men, that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel said unto Elisha, when he saw them, My father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? Verse 22. And Elisha answered, You shall not smite them. Would you smite those whom you have taken captive with your sword and with your bow? Set bread and water before them that they may eat and drink and go to their master. Notes. Uh, this verse, these verses right here picture the great work of grace. The king of Israel would kill them. However, Elisha proclaims the love of God to them. Uh, what a staunch difference there is. Verse 23. And he prepared great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away, and they went to their master. So the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. Notes. Well, at least at that time, uh, Samaria and all the other nations around Israel were not very nice. Uh, anyways, verse 24. And it came to pass after this, which would be several years, then that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his host and went up and besieged Samaria. Notes. Now, this would never have happened had Ahab put Ben-Hadad to death when he was in his power. The sufferings recorded in this passage would have been completely avoided, and this siege and its horrors fulfilled the prophecy then made to Ahab by the rebuking prophet found in 1 Kings Chapter 20, verse 31 through 34. Verse 25. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it, until an ass's head was sold for fourscore pieces of silver, and the fourth part of a cab of dove's dung for five pieces of silver. Notes. Well, this is happening because of Samaria's sin. 
And behold, they who were the Syrians besieged it. The Lord allowed this to happen because of Israel's sin as well. Uh, and I have absolutely no idea why they would want to buy bird droppings, but I have been told that it has something to do with them <laughs> using it in their hair. You don't have to worry about me using such. Hopefully I don't have to worry about y'all doing anything like that. Anyways, rambling. Verse 26. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help my lord, O king. And he said, If the lord do not help you, when shall I help you? Out of the barn floor or out of the wine press? Notes. In other words, do you suppose that I have stores of food at my disposal? Continuing. And the king said unto her, What ails you? And she answered, this woman said unto me, Give your son, that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son, and did eat him. And I said unto her, On the next day, Give your son, that we may eat him. And she has hid her son. Notes. Now that should really turn your stomach right there. But this siege had become so severe, that the people of Israel, God's chosen people, had resorted to cannibalism, and Moses had predicted that this would happen if the people turned their backs upon God. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 53, up to 57. Verse 30, And it came to pass, when the king heard the words of the woman, that he rent his clothes, and he passed by upon the wall, and the people looked, and behold, he had sackcloth within upon his flesh. Notes. Uh, there was no repentance on the part of Jehoram. The sackcloth was only a ceremony. While it was definitely a sign of his tremendous problems, it did not point to the cause of those problems, which was his terrible sin. Well, in fact, the church presently is loaded with similar ceremonies. However, the ceremonies are not based on the cross, and thereby they are not worth anything. They're little more than people just doing something little more than a human activity that means nothing verse 31 then he said God do so and more also to me if the head of Elisha the son of Shaphat shall stand on him this day notes <laughs> his opposition to Elisha shows his true spiritual condition as well, the law will always attack grace. Uh, the flesh will always try to kill the spirit, if you uh, really think about it. Instead of the modern church realizing the cause of its problems, and thereby repenting, it attacks the ones who are preaching the answer, namely the cross. They have substituted humanistic psychology in place of the cross, and the end result is, is that we have more problems than we've ever had before. Uh, sitting down and talking with another human being about your problems does have its benefits. But unless you repent and are restored, uh, you're not making any real progress. Verse 32. But Elisha sat in his house, and the elders sat with him. And the king set a man from, bef from before him. But ere the messenger came to him, he said to the elders, See you how this son of a murderer has sent to take away my head? Look, when the messenger comes, shut the door and hold him fast at the door. Is not the sound of his master's feet behind him? Notes. Elisha was supernaturally warned of what was about to take place, that an executioner was coming almost immediately to take away his life, and that the king himself would arrive shortly after. Nothing good was coming out of this. That's to be certain. Well, we'll pick up in chapter 6, verse 33. Thank you, and God bless.